What's up, guys? In today's episode of Why Stuff is Good in Advance OU, we examine the metagame ramifications of the Weapon X project from X-Men going too far to the extent that it crossed franchises and created a Pokemon, much like Deadpool being turned into Detective Pikachu. Now, being a pseudo-legendary, Metagross packs impressive stats, the most notable of which is, of course, its famed 135 base attack, which is tied for the highest in OU with its fellow Hoenn pseudo-legendary, Salamence. It also possesses an exceptional base defense stat of 130, which alongside its steel typing allows it to fend off some of the most dangerous physical attacks in the tier. Tyranitar and Aerodactyl's Rock Slide, Salamence's Hidden Power Flying, Snorlax's Body Slam, and even opposing Metagross's Meteor Mesh. Even though these Pokemon come equipped with Earthquake, Metagross is so bulky and so powerful that it gets the job done regardless, which is an accurate summation of its functionality within the tier as a whole. Thanks to its prowess and consistency on both the offensive and defensive sides of the spectrum, it has accrued the lofty rank of A+. It is consistently able to use its auspicious typing and bulk to switch into some of the most dangerous Pokemon in the game and generate significant offense in return, with its multifaceted attacking potential backed by its complementing stats. Now we will look more in-depth at the things Metagross is good at and why it is good at them. So... This first Metagross set is pretty intuitive. It's pretty much looking at what Metagross is good at on the surface and going all out in that area. So bulk and attack. It's not that fast, so let me just maximize its good qualities. The three moves listed are pretty essential. Meteor Mash is, of course, its important stab that has coverage on so many big Pokemon in the metagame. It's a harder smack on Tyranitar, harder in the sense that it can actually kill it in one shot. Uh, hits Salamence, Salaby, Blissey, so Aerodactyl, so it's pretty important. You will not see a Metagross without Meteor Mash. And of course that attack boost potential is huge. Earthquake is great complementary coverage against Steels, other meta, Jirachi, Magneton, and Explosion is a game breaker. Thanks to its enormous power, it'll take out just about everything that doesn't resist it. And that is a huge part of how a lot of offense functions. Metagross is willing to take itself down to take a Pokemon out. And that Pokemon being taken out can be the difference. Easiest example, Metagross blows up Swampert. And then Salamence, Aerodactyl, Tyranitar go crazy. So uh, that's pretty simple. Max HP makes it durable against a lot of really strong attacks. Uh, it'll survive things like plus one earthquake from a DD Salamence or, uh, you know, banned, also applicable to Tyranitar and other Metagross. Remember, same attack stat as Mence. And the 12 defense with the max HP here assures that it will even live an adamant Dugtrio earthquake at max HP. Uh, the 232 attack means that it will always kill a bulkless Dugtrio with earthquake, meaning you don't have to risk a meteor miss. Now, these EVs are not set in stone, some people are perfectly happy without it, but it's a general guideline, it's going to go bulky with a lot of attack. And the last 12 EVs, you can pump, in it, pump them into attack, you can pump them into defense for a little more security against those powerful earthquakes. You can even uh, put them into Spadef, which can maybe save you against uh, Zapdos or Magneton in case you have to take a hit from one of those. So, uh, other than that, it's pretty much set in stone. Now. The last moves. Uh, this is where it gets interesting, and there's not really a set standard. So it's going to be among these. Sorry about that, adjusting the mic. So, um, one move is Protect. This is a great move because Metagross is immune to sand, one of its best qualities. And this lets it make use of that bulk by grabbing that 6% everywhere it can to stay out of range for an attack. That can be the difference. So surviving that Bandit Earthquake, surviving that plus one Hydro Pump from Suicune, surviving that Thunderbolt from Zapdos, things of that nature. Uh, so that's just one. It also helps offset damage taken from Spikes. Because Skarmory is Metagross's biggest nemesis uh, not just because it walls it because Skarmory while it may seem impenetrable is vulnerable to getting beaten down if the Metagross offense user is on top of their game 
which they should be because that's how you succeed with offense against those choke holding defensive teams and uh, just getting Metagross in at every opportunity to fire off those mashes especially if he gets a boost it's more about the spikes uh, putting Metagross on a greater timer so protect helps offset that and keep you out of range for things like Jirachi Fire Punch and Magneton Thunderbolt uh, of course, those defensive benchmarks I mentioned, with spikes up, you're going to have to be a little more careful. But there are ways around that that we will explore later, like Salamence's Intimidate and um, Leech Seed, Wish, things of that nature. But yeah, that's that's Protect. Uh, some players, like Hidden Power Grass, because they're like, you know, I don't want to blow up on Swampert, I want to just destroy it. So uh, this thing is really good because with Magneton support because then Skarmory's not a problem and then you get to hit Swampert really hard without blowing up on it which makes pivoting into Gengar to absorb an explosion way harder uh, and you basically harass their team a lot more. Uh, if they've got a Zapdos last on that big five, you know the Skarm, Bliss, Pert, Gar, uh, Titar, then Zapdos is going to start countering you so you're going to want a way to abuse Zapdos being dead. I would recommend uh, DD Gyarados, which is normally pretty good against that team once you uh, chip the Gengar, which shouldn't be hard, uh, given that it's often going to be their best measure against an Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Snorlax. You know, they're going to trade that uh, will o -Wisp for the damage, so I realize this, this sounds complicated, but it's really not. This is just uh, how advanced offense works. Everyone has to work together, because even if you're, um, you have HP Grass for that Swampert, if you don't get to land it and instead you're just stoned by Zapdos every time, stonewalled by Zapdos every time, then what good is it going to do if you can't really abuse that? So that's where that comes in. Uh, and that's kind of an example of how Metagross excels. Oh, remember to adjust your EVs accordingly if you go with HP Grass. IVs, sorry. Uh, and EVs. Um, yeah, it's a huge part of what Metagross does on offense. Defensively, it guards against things like Aerodactyl and Tyranitar and Snorlax. And in return puts out really big offense um, that helps your other guys clean up this Metagross isn't really a cleaner it's more of an early to mid game kind of guy I mean if it sticks around to the late game it's because it's providing that big fat rock resist uh, to stand in Aerodactyl's way or because Snorlax is resting you don't want uh, Metagon yet you want it to consistently be able to threaten it out but generally, this guy is going to be blowing up on that water type or that Zapdos. Um, yeah, Metagross is a preferred partner, but or uh, Magneton is a preferred partner for any Metagross set, pretty much. But um, with this one, it's especially notable. Uh, Protect can kind of offset it because then it's on less of a timer. Anyway, the last move that does not require a brave nature, of course, is Toxic. This one's rare, though. It used to be more of a thing. It's pretty much well HP Grass. Let's me cripple both Milotic and Sweet uh, Swampert at the same time. Sweet Coon 2 without necessarily having to boom, and HP Grass is useless against two out of those three. And uh, Toxic is just a nice overall uh, move. Also good against Zapdos. And then Milotic and Swampert started running refresh all over the place, so it's kind of like, what's the point, you know? So. Uh, you don't see this, but it is an option. But yeah, on uh, this, you know, bulky attacking Metagross, then you, you're generally going to see Protect these days, I would say. HP Grass is not as common, but it it's definitely viable. Just Protect is uh, something to keep in mind. Um, you could also do things like run Rock Slide if you don't want Zapdos walling you and you really want to zero in on that Swampert and blow it up, but that's quite rare. Um... And leftovers are to keep it healthy throughout the game, although Lumberry is definitely an option if you are planning to play it more fast paced. You want to absorb that Gengar Will O Wisp, that Snorlax Body Slam Para, uh, whatever. So, that's something to consider. And if you want to go fast with it, you can, but we'll examine the speed uh, factor with the Choice Band set. So, uh,. This is kind of a good segue because when you run Lum, then you lose a lot of survivability for lefties. So those benchmarks, uh, even against offensive teams without spikes, then those benchmarks are uh, going to slip away from you pretty quick. I mean, if a lefties Metagross takes a Snorlax Body Slam, then you know it's going to recover up with lefties, and then it still can take that plus one Salamence EQ. But as soon as it loses those lefties, and if you're running an offensive team, you're probably not slowing it down with Leech Seed and Wish, so you're probably not going to get that back. 
then suddenly you're not going to be able to take that plus one attack. So that's something you're going to have to consider, um, especially with how these offensive teams, I mean, this is that's their game. They're trying to get Metagross into that range. So you're going to have to have those alternate measures. Uh, Salamence is really Metagross's best friend in this uh, area. Anyway, so Choice Bands, perfect example of that whole thing, except this time it's even worse because it's locking into attacks. Meaning that, uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to, let's say, Meteor Mash or Earthquake into a Celebi and that Meteor Mash or blow it up after. Nope. Also means Protect is even more of a problem. I mean, this Metagross set has enough of an issue. Also, Lumberry wouldn't go with Protect. You'd probably go with HP Grass. I mean, this set, has no this set has enough of an issue in a one-on-one -on -one against Swampert picking when to blow up. Um, generally, what happens is you just kind of EQ uh, and hope that it protects so you can more safely blow it up the next time. But uh, here, that's not really an option. you got to get it in on something that isn't protecting, like Tyranitar, and blow things up on the Switch. And this Metagross really takes the pace of the game up. I mean, you're generally not going to get too much defensive use out of it the whole game because the longer the game goes on the likelier that this Metagross won't do anything uh, in most matchups now uh, let me clarify that in some matchups where it's just like a bulky defensive team that's not really pressuring much in the way of trapping or hazards or much then yeah you can just spam meteor mash all the live long day have get that boost on my Lodic and just go to town but against a lot of teams that are more suffocating you know th that trap and hazard dynamic then they're going to make you pay for meteor mashing. They're going to me, uh, they're going to result in you not getting the kind of use you're going to want to get out of your Metagross. Um, like a lot of Skarmory teams, by the time you break through a Protect Skarmory with Mash, it's already gotten its spikes down, and now your team is not too happy about that. Even worse scenario, uh, it gets its spikes down, and then Magneton comes in, and you're not going to get any more use out of that gross. I mean, you chip Magneton, big deal. Who, what cares about Magneton? Not a lot. Besides Skarmory. And uh, you're not even going to get the chance for that boom on the Blissey later. So, uh, generally, I'm not saying you blow your Metagross up every time, but you have to be analyzing their team. And if they've got a trap-heavy team that's ready to sack, or that's going to pick you off, um... If you stretch it out too much, then you're going to want to make sure you get some use out of it. And the diff the reason this is different from the others, from the other uh, attacker set with a lot of bulk, is obviously you don't run as much bulk. You want speed most of the time. I mean, a bulky CB gross can work, but with the lack of lefties, you're just not going to use those benchmarks enough for it to come to fruition. Um, for, for those those benchmarks are not going to end up actually mattering more often than not. Since you're taking that unrecoverable damage, I mean, if you're if you're running a bulkier CB gross team that tries to pick up the pace from, you know, the kind of hanging around that it usually does, and you want to throw in wishes and leech seeds, then you know maybe go crazy. But speed is generally, um, generally killer, especially with you know max speed Metagross outrunning modest Magneton since it runs HP Fire, and, you know HP Grass. A tie is better than nothing. But uh, yeah, you're generally going to want to break up the pace of that game with that early boom. Uh, so, and the other difference why you want to do that as opposed to the other one is because this boom is so strong that it will kill anything that's not immune to it. So, you know, um, Skarmory, dead. Super dead. And that's the biggest difference, uh, really. Because you can immediately blow up Skarm and so much of their pressure is just gone. Those teams with Skarmory really really love their spikes i mean obviously that's why they have skarm and denying them that is denying them a lot of potential pressure it frees you up to breathe a lot more and break their team down when they're not suffocating you at every corner so if you see that if you're sensing this guy's got a skarm you know i let off with my blissey and baited in let off with my zapdos and baited in a blissey and now my metagross is in you know what you are not going to like it when more often than not you just try to meteor mash to be safe and you know skarm gets him up and then phases you out and then later he does the same thing and there's still a swampert and you're getting worn down and it's just uncomfortable so and of course the scar magneton situation is even worse so generally because it's not just about your metagross being worn down it's about the rest of your team being worn down for switching in so uh let's say even if your zapdos whirlwinds back in and 
you go back to Metagross on the Blissey, it's the same thing, unless you're getting really lucky with attack raises, which, I hate to tell you, are not that likely, um, you know, with that accuracy and 20%, so, not something to bank on. So it is worth considering, uh, just blowing it up immediately, and many players do just that. So, uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, r requires Magneton a lot less, because it kind of takes on that job of Skarm Killer. And it's easier to beat up on Skarm's teammates if there are no spikes to deal with. So, as for the last move, Rock Slide's pretty common for defensive Zapdos, but it doesn't get used a lot. So, um, and you can also do things like Double Edge for a sma stronger smack on the waters. It's actually significantly stronger, um, especially in Sand for Milotic, but, you know, this Double Edge will also really put Pert in a precarious position. And you can even go Hidden Power Bug for Obnoxious Selvi, but this is rare. Most people don't, so ge generally Rock Slide is safe. Um, I mean, people have been fi trying to figure out the best last move on CB Gross forever. You know, for all we know, it's Pursuit, but um, yeah, generally Rock Slide. Anyway, that's CB Gross for you. Um, agility. This one, this one's kind of a mix of both because it's giving up that last move, and but it's investing more in speed, less in less in either attack or in bulk, and. Um, Around here, I believe, it, actually I think it's around here, is that benchmark for surviving plus one ments, in case uh, you really need that for your offensive team. But uh, generally this is kind of standard because it's just, it's bulky enough, you know, like the Okos and the 2XKOs are generally going to stay the same as long as you don't uh, go too crazy with switching it into attacks every which way. And it, it's kind of meant to be a sweeper, but it's not necessarily, ne uh, it doesn't need to be a sweeper, and by this I'll... Um, Show this. So, I mean, it's a great idea to agility, and then nothing faster than you is going to annoy you, um, you know, and pick you off. And but you're generally going to still be walled because Metagross's problem isn't being outsped. I mean, it is, but it's also being walled, and that's why it explodes. And this agility set is mostly letting your explosion hit something relevant. Meta is all about the boom. So by this I mean, you know, someone might say, let me sack my 2% whatever and then revenge it with Magneton or Dugtrio and then you agility on that switch and suddenly, well, bam, now, now I can't do that. Now I have to send in my water type and now he can explode on me. Uh, that kind of thing. So it, it's useful for that. And of course against other offense where their method for dealing with Metagross is whale on it and abuse the fact that it's slow then yeah, that can be a deal breaker. Like for uh, Salamence, Zapdos, Arrow kind of stuff, it's like, well, Zap Meta isn't taking hits from Salamence and Zapdos, but it might not need to. Of course, you're not going to meteor mash your way through a healthy Zapdos, but uh, Zapdos also takes hits, so it's more about being able to finish it off. Uh, same deal with Salamence to a lesser extent, because meteor mash does hit it really hard, but it's not quite O-coing. So... Uh, yeah, Lumberry is common because you want to be able to set up an agility on like a Magneton or a Snor and you want to be able to, you know, switch into Snorlax Body Slam and live to tell the, and be able to agility later, basically, so, there's that. As for speed, some people can just go max speed, you know, they're like, well, I want it to be fast even before, and, you know, that's fair, but 198 is the minimum you go because this allows you to outrun Aerodactyl and Jolteon after a boost. And then you just chuck the rest in. This also, um, in HP. This also lets you tie with bulky Milotic, so some people understandably want more. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna go up a little. Here's where DD Tar hangs out, the old standard DD Tar. Here is bulky Suicune that outruns Marowak. Here, um, th this is the stat it hits, by the way, not the stat you beat. To beat it, you go one more. So, to beat this Suicune, you would go here. Uh, here's defensive Jirachi, the minus uh, speed one with body slam and fire punch. Um, here's offensive Pert. Here's uh, offensive Titar. Uh, the mixed attackers and some DD variants. You know, so, and then there's this is actually kind of a common creep even on Choice Band. Because um, Choice Band can go max, but it can also throw some bulk in there. Not necessarily the, you know, this whole charade, but. I mean, more kind of a mix. You know, I only need to outrun, let's say, you know, Skarmory and Claydol or whatever, and the rest, I'm just going to use bulk. I, I was, I, the numbers are fairly arbitrary, but those targets were real, the Skarm and Claydol and, and hang around here. And they kind of have the same speed dilemma we're having now with agility, the whole Milotic Suicune situation. But, uh, yeah, so here it's, uh, th that's 
this is a common creep. 222, like a standard gross spread, could definitely is definitely 222, 72, and then you start creeping. And I mean, I've seen this one a lot, so you can see how this could keep going. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And this, of course, will outrun Magneton. Um, you may wonder, is Jolly Metagross ever worth it? I would say if you're not using it to break through Skarmory, it definitely can be. You want that plus attack stat, uh, however way you're doing it, if Metagross is blowing through it. But, um, because so much of it, uh, you know how I said that no matter, unless you're really going for it, then the general amount of mid-range bulk will be enough for the same amounts of Okos and two KOs. I mean, barring things like Fire Blast from Mixments is the only thing I can really think of, then that's the only one where a KO really hangs in the balance at high health. And of course, that can, you know, go to hell if it takes an attack like Metagross tends to do because it switches in on so much, like uh, Snorlax and Tyranitar and that kind of thing. Then, um. <sighs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought. That was a lot of words. But basically, yeah, bl the bulk is, um, oh, yeah, now I get it. So, uh, it's kind of the same in reverse. If Metagross isn't trying to bust through Skarmory, or I guess Zapdos, um, if it's trying to Meteor Max its way through that, then most of the time, it's not going to make a difference whether it's plus attack or not, because it's going to be, you know, mash and EQ to a KO KOing or to a KOing things, like Tyranitar, Jirachi, other Metagross, uh, regardless, or you're going to be exploding on the Swamp, or, or the Milotic, or Zapdos, or whatever. Uh, there are some situations against, like, bulky Gengar, um, but I wouldn't recommend it on agility. Obviously, that's a little counterintuitive, but on, like, your all-out attacker set, if you choose to make this or this, which we'll get to, um, fast, then, yeah, you can totally run Jolly, because if you're going to just be blowing up on things anyway, and you can even do crazy things like run Salic Berry um, for when you get knocked into low health and don't want to be picked off, kind of like an agility without the agility. Uh, I mean, you're still going to lose to... Aerodactyl and Jolteon, but let me just uh, give you an example. Um, you can go up to uh, beating its two. Oh, yes, that's it. That's the Doug Trio number. And then you can you know, have some this, and you can kind of. I mean, if you really believe in that, well, the attack stat doesn't make that much of a difference. I rem I really recommend the damage calculator just to make sure you have your benchmarks against the uh, bulky Tars and Jirachis of the world and Metagrosses. But yeah, you can e even say, well, if it's, you know, if it's all the same with Mash and Quake versus exploding on things, then I can go some bulk, and you totally can. But, uh, so, but on agility, you sh it's going to be adamant. That's, I just wanted to mention that. And uh, 240, this is Endeavor Swampert, and this is Jolly Tyranitar, and this is a bunch of po defensive Pokemon like Celebi, Zapdos, Jirachi, that try to outspeed it. Um, even some sub Suicune run around here so by going going fast you can do that and timid magneton is even a popular thing now for hp ground adamant skarmory and opposing magneton so um yeah it's something to consider i mean max max is even worth your consideration but yeah uh that's that's that i kind of got sidetracked from agility but i mean agility is kind of already explained it's you get fast you don't get trapped you outrun the things that try to wail on you skarmy included gengar and it's a good late game sweeper. Great on uh, Swords Dance Pass. This is probably the scariest Pokemon of the tier with a Swords Dance Pass to it. So that those Celebi teams, uh, you know, bait in the Skarm, Maggot, get your Celebi back in on the water that Metagross draws in, or the Zapdos. Celebi gets the Swords Dance off, passes it to Metagross on the Tyranitar or whatever, and uh, go to town. You gotta be careful about taking a bunch of Earthquakes, but Celebi can also run HP Fighting, can run Shadow Ball for Gengar trying to stop the pass. That's Celebi's thing. Metagross is an amazing recipient. So yeah, that's agility. Now mixed, if you want to break through Skarm without relying on Meteor Mash, then this is generally the accepted standard. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory. We're going to go with Rash because I think that's the most common. It's kind of like the special version of the bulky attacker. So let's say this. Oh, this it probably wouldn't have Protect with Salak. Sorry about that. But yeah, um... Remember this one with all the benchmarks? Then it's kind of like the special version of that. Um, max special attack because you really have to hit Skarm as hard as possible with HP Fire, and then you can throw some bulk in or some speed in there to outrun Skarms. And if they outrun you, then they're losing on bulk. Um, you know, throw your Salamence benchmarks here because it might be nice. 
Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, pretty much the same as the others regarding the speed creep thing, and some people like to go fast on this. Um, generally, you'll, you're gonna go plus special attack, though, because that Skarm hit is really important. Skarm Metagross relationship is key, as, uh, I think you're beginning to see. But yeah, um, the idea here is, well, Quake is covered by HP Fire, which also hits Skarm, which is yes and no. I mean, yes, you will dink other Metagross and Magneton, but you're not threatening them nearly as much, obviously. And defense of Jirachi, you're pretty much going to get stonewalled, so you need to have a plan to take advantage of that somehow. It's not going to be breaking through things all on its own. It's more about getting through that Skarm so you can threaten to blow up the Pert or the Jirachi, I guess, but uh, it's something to consider, that how it can fall flat on its face. It's also helpful against will Gengar since Lum and Psychic, so even if it doesn't get burned, it's threatening to scare it. And Metagross does get Pursuit. So some people say, you know, it's kind of my Pursuit Trapper because I want to run a different Tyranitar. Uh, and it's not going to be killing Gengar, but it's not about killing it as much as getting the damage on it that you need. Because Gengar runs very specific bulk thresholds to withstand certain hits. For example, it the common bulky set always survives a plus one HP flying from Salamence. But pretty much any damage on it at all, and that's gone. Kaput. So that little pursuit on it can be the game changer when Doug Trio follows up on the Metagross and then Mens gets that DD. And of course, pursuit and explosion is a nice combo, so you're kind of really spreading out the, the damage. You just gotta have a plan for that really, really annoying defensive Jirachi. It also works well with Gyarados, of course, because uh, Gengar gets dinked and there's Gyarados' entry. And uh, you can blow up Zapdos, which you'll commonly bait in, so that's something else to consider. So yeah, that's the mixed set. Very common on mixed offenses with guys like Salamence and Tyranitar running the same kinds of sets. And like Focus Punch or Fire Blast Snorlax. Just uh, wanting to be able to run their great offensive sets that scare so much, but just hate Skarm and not wanting to waste a slot on Magneton, who can be a drag defensively. So uh, that's the purpose of this. Uh, but know what giving up Earthquake is worth. Uh, generally, you're going to be scaring Blissey pretty much the same, though, so that's nice. I mean, some people even go um, on Pursuit sets. Uh, if you run Explosion, then even with a minus attack nature, I wouldn't do this with Mash, but with minus attack, uh, for or with three special attacks and Explosion, this is by far the strongest, quote-unquote, special attacking Explosion you'll ever see in comparison to, like, Gengar and Regice. Right, so Impus, so you're thinking, hey, these defensive, this thing has a lot of uh, bulk. Why don't I just focus all on that? answer is, early in the video I talked about how it succeeded in spite of Earthquake, um, that, which is true, but it also doesn't want to take several of them, and uh, this kind of fixes that, but kind of doesn't. It's a great set, don't get me wrong. When you really want that security against that you know, physical attacking armada, this thing is great, if you've got a Magneton, because this is never breaking by Skarm. Uh, so y this pretty much presupposes Magneton, but it's fantastic alongside it because it's so much freer without Skarmory, which just suffocates it at every corner. But yeah, this, this lets it do its uh, job a lot better and is a lot less scared of taking that one predicted Earthquake on the switch from Aerodactyl or, you know, Mens trying to soften its counters up. It can bounce back from them uh, much more easily, but uh, it's still, you're going to want some backup. I mean, it's a great way to patch holes on certain offensive teams. Like, if you got a bunch of special attacking stuff, like um, Zapdos spikes, and you really want that uh, backbone against the rock types and physical attackers in general, and you've got Zapdos mag, Skarm, then yeah, uh, Metagross fits in great because it doesn't slow it down as much against Celebi as Swampert would because it can threaten to blow it up, and there goes Zapdos. Uh, and, there, and, you know, now Zapdos is a lot scarier, but I think you get the idea that it's not going to be able to withstand too many attacks. So it's for teams that want to keep up the defense, w want defense while being able to keep up the offense. But bear in mind, it's Meteor Mesh being so weakened means that uh, you're going to have to do that calc against that Tyranitar before you assume it's a hard counter. On the other hand, it does take Earthquakes like a champion. I mean, run the calc of a plus two Tyranitar Earthquake against um, Metagross. Since a lot of Tyranitar go for the plus two on Gross instead of trying to EQ it twice because uh, some bulkier DDTAR can live a mash most of the time from even offensive Gross, non-banned of course, and uh, they go for that, but it doesn't work out for them. Um, 
because the plus two that they were counting on killing the gross does not work here. Of course, it, it's uh, you know kill or be killed, and this can kind of be scary. So you gotta you gotta be careful. But Metagross is uh, very good uh, with Mag and helps to have spikes to kind of make up for that uh, weakness against Tyranitar. So that's Impish Gross. Um, now we will go through its relationships with the rest of the metagame. Now I'm just going to highlight the big ones. Uh, meta on Tar. Meta pivots into Tar, or switches into Tar early in games and dishes out offense. That's just how it is, because Tyranitar is in the thick of the action, and as a result, Metagross is in the thick of the action. And that whole meta, Tar, water dance is a big part of offense, and uh, how it's set up affects the late game, and thus the winner greatly. Um, that's a big one. Uh, meta Pert is another really large one, uh, since you gotta, if you're not running that HP Grass, oh, I guess I should have mentioned on mixed sets, you can also do things like Thunder Punch, oh, uh, Psychic, half the point of Psychic is that you can actually hit Pert without exploding, however, if you don't have spikes, and let me tell you, most teams, if you don't have a Cloister, which you usually won't, then you're not gonna be able to fit spikes on this unless you're cool with total defensive road sinks and holes and, ugh, but yeah, Psychic is able to actually hit Pert. But um, I think the main allure in that, and being able to actually damage Pert, is that uh, it's more tempted to say, well, he's not hurting me that much, so I can stay in a little bit, and that's when you pop the boom. Um, the aggressive booms are the most unexpected and the hardest to defend against. That's a good, not something to live and die by, but it's a good rule of thumb uh, to consider when using and facing Metagross. So, uh, yeah, that's a big one. Metagross, or Gengar. Whoops, I did not want to go to the Metagross analysis page. Uh, feel free to check it out. It's got useful stuff, but... Um, yeah, Gengar, we've gone over that. You know, Will-O-Wisp. Um, not some... That's why a lot of them run Lum. I mean, this can run Lum, too, just for that. L agility, Mixed, Psychic. I mean, the Pursuit, we've gone over that. Meta on Meta, I, it kind of speaks for itself. It's a lot... A lot of it is a speed creep. Um, and Impish is good at, uh switching into CB gross uh, mashes, but otherwise don't take too many of them, especially if you're taking several, because that can make things hairy against its teammates, especially if they've got an Earthquake Snorlax you intend on switching into later. Um, and these guys all partner together really well, too, for various reasons. Metagross's typing in bulk is a blessing to any team that wants some defensive integrity, so... Um, most of it is self-explanatory. We've gone over the meta blowing up Zap once Skarm's out of the picture uh, thing. You know, abuse it with Gyarados. Um, pursuit the Gengar, so you stick damage elsewhere before uh, Zapdos. I think that's a recurring theme of Metagross. It's about figuring out how you're going to stick damage um, as close to guaranteed as you can that you can then take advantage of concretely. It's not... Oh, well, you know, 30% on Gengar, 30% on Gengar, so that's probably going to be good. Uh, so, you got to really take advantage of it somehow. Um, it works well with Snorlax, especially. So Skarm, we've gone over that whole Magneton relationship, the band, the mix sets, the early blowing up. Um, and there's not really a lot of relationships here, I don't think. Um, nothing too notable, other than... Other than the generic meta can take a hit and explode on them, which is on, it's so much defensive utility. It's why it's so good on offense. It's pretty much, it's an equalizer of sorts. It's like, well, I don't know what he's going to bring, but when he brings it out, I can probably take a hit with meta and blow it up. So, um, yeah. Uh, we've gone over the Jirachi, the defensive Jirachi dynamic against a Quakeless Metagross thing. Uh, meta is a crucial anti-Snorlax measure for a lot of teams, but it does have to be careful of uh, the Trappers, especially on those Cursed Rest Snorlax team, which employ both. Uh, so you're going to want to have some backup against Lax, especially because they also tend to pack Suicune or Milotic, but you can blow that up because the Trappers don't really love switching in, especially if you're firing off Earthquakes against Snorlax, which is kind of safe. And yeah, if you're playing offense, and you face a Snorlax, then don't let it come in for free too many times because a lot of the time that T-Tar slash Meta Switch is telegraphed and you're going to want to, you don't want to take too many of those because your offensive gross, I mean, it's still tanky, but it suddenly gets put into a tighter spot than it would like when facing off against Metagross. 
so something to consider. Like, it's uh, worth thinking about T-bolting twice with your Zapdos rather than uh, switching out and giving him that free Quake. And suddenly the Snorlax is in a bad position, and even if he body slams and Zapdos is still okay because its speed is the weapon, and it's still going to be hitting everything really hard. So th things like that to consider. Um, Metagross is also a great Snorlax partner. Snorlax is a lot harder to pressure without spikes. So if you got a CB Gross and you blow that Skarm up, then suddenly... Lax is really scary for um, even the most defensive team. Of course, you gotta have be careful about Gengar and its Will O Wisp and Tyranitar, of course, but that just goes hand in hand with having the team ready for the threats of the metagame. So um, the mix sets also gang up on Lax or on Skarm together, but uh, really gotta be careful, especially against defensive Jirachi, which can also be obnoxious to both. So uh, and of course, both go fantastically with Magneton because it does a lot of the work for them. Just got to really be careful about that increasing Doug Trio weakness. Uh, Snorlax is also a great Metagross partner because it is Metagross-esque in that it is able to take so many varied hits from the various offensive Pokemon in the metagame that hit really hard. And no matter how hard they hit, Snorlax can probably take one and blow it up. So it's a way of uh, being safe while being offensive. What more can you ask for? The Salamence Dugtrio relation, or Salamence Dugtrio, Salamence Metagross relationship is beautiful. It is one of the most synergistic, colorful combinations in advance, and I don't mean colorful just because of their, they're both blue. Um, but it, it's just the possibilities are just endless. I mean, Salamence soaks up Earthquake and weakens the attack stat, and Metagross resists Rock, and so like, you can do things like switch back and forth. And just with two offensive Pokemon, you can completely neuter and threaten and go on the offensive with these two Pokemon. Um, it's it's really a thing of beauty. And of course, they gang up on similar targets. I mean, Waters. Um, Metagross blows them up, or, you know, they both have HP Grass and send Swamper pack in, and Metagross softens the, other, softens the other team up for a DD Mence clean, and the offensive and defensive synergy of these two is just beautiful. Um, so, it's, it, that whole Metagross is weak to Earthquake thing... Nothing to switch to Salamence can't solve. So, sometimes uh, even like mixed Salamence, or they sometimes uh, ditch one of their moves, Brick Break or HP Grass, and uh, Wish, just to give Meta Metagross a little more longevity. Um, but usually it's just their natural bulk and uh, type synergy is just a, a thing of, oh, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, definitely one of my favorite aspects of Advance, uh, those two working in tandem. Uh, even Metagross resisting Ice, uh, can work, you know, switching on the Gengar Ice Punch aimed at it, or like a Zapdos HP Ice in a pinch. Um, that synergy is just lovely. Uh, or like even Mixmens being able to come in on a fire move aimed at um, Metagross. For example, if you've got a slow Metagross, and you're switching it into a Tyranitar, um, and you feel like, hey, this guy might try to roast me with Fire Blast, suddenly Mens is in, and he soaks up that Fire Blast, and he's threatening the Tyranitar with Brick Break. And if you think the uh, the guy might switch, might stay in and try to ice beam you if he's that kind of Tyranitar, you can now switch to your Snorlax, which is now less afraid of Tyranitar because of that minus one attack. And you can keep doing this up with the whole Intimidate switch back and forth. Um, yeah, Metagross and Salamence also are great at switching into HP Grass and threatening Tyranitar, so you can have that safer uh, initial Tyranitar switch with Swampert, who's not going to get immediately melted by Earthquake, and obviously you don't want to switch Salamence to an, into a Rock Slide if your Zapdos or Snorlax is facing it, and Swampert's that kind of mid-ground, and then you're like, well, they might follow it up with HP Grass, and both Salamence and Metagross are completely valid switch-ins. Uh, so Salamence neuters the threat of him getting risky and DDing or EQing again, and Metagross is just, um, uh, you may, uh, wow, that was a lot. I'm sorry. But I think that was all useful information, so please forgive me that one slip up. But yeah, Metagross is another way of uh, getting in aggressively um, and being able to put the pressure on in return. That's what Metagross does and its fellow offensive crony, the Salamence, Snorlax, Zapdos, Swampert, Tyranitar, Jirachi, Celebi, Suicune um, area of the tier when going on the offensive. They switch into things with their defensive uh, prowess and respond in kind offensively to generate um, breaking down the other team. It's the beauty of advanced offense. Wow, that was really something. Um, but yeah, so the Metagross Salamence is basically the best thing ever, and I love it, and it's amazing. I sound like Leslie Nope from Parks and Rec, but it's so it's so true. Um, 
yeah, how, how she talks about Ann Perkins is how I feel about Meta and Salamence. I'm not sure which one I am in that relationship, though. Anyway, uh, Doug Cho, you gotta be careful of Doug. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can run agility or bulk to get out of it, and protect helps, too. Impish, forget about it. Uh, Starmie, Starmie is annoying for offense, um, but it's also frail, so it doesn't really switch in much, and the reason I mention this is because Metagross is one of those things that can take a hit and, uh, hit it hard back. Of course, you're not gonna take two Hydros unless you're Protect. Uh, some people actually on Protect, then they're saying, no, I don't need all this attack, kind of the whole, remember the whole principle about how I don't need all this attack if I've got a Magneton for Skarm so I can put it elsewhere, like in Speed? Well, that, but with Spadef. I mean, some people will use their anywhere from like 12 to like 64 for Doug, let's say 12 to be safe. And then uh, they run anywhere from like, let's call it you know, 64, 72 I think is the a popular number. And then you can't run this bonus, but this this will still, 363 and 12 is enough for Doug Trio, so you get a, a beautifully rounded spread. And this helps you out in switching into Offensive Starmie with Protect. Um, ideally, you switch into that Ice Beam, but you know now you can take a couple hydros in a one-on-one -on -one so you can eq it twice and kill it rather than exploding which means you can keep your sn uh, metagross for let's say the snorlax for another ko uh, so uh, i remember earlier i said you know the aggressive explosion is the most dangerous but at the same time you have to find the sweet spot the balance between blowing up early and you know hitting a target you really want to hit a hit and you got to find the difference between that and needing Metagross defensively and keeping it around and not blowing it up too early. So, uh, there's that one. Magneton, same thing. Can be foiled by speed or agility uh, or protect, but it's Thunderbolt. It's, it's harder than you'd think. So, and uh, Aerodactyl is a big thing that Metagross is responsible for, resists three of the four attacks. And another beautiful piece of synergy with Salamis. You ever want to earthquake that thing, or just uh, double edge the swamp hurt, um, because it hits hard, uh, and then Salamence might be the right switch in. So it's a beautiful subset of offense and switching around dangerous Pokemon that I, I just adore. So uh, there's that, and then Moltres is also worth mentioning because a lot of offensive teams are really really destroyed by Moltres and Metagross is a prime victim of that because Moltres is one of the few things that can easily off the bat immediately right away just kill Metagross in one shot so uh, that's something to consider don't give Moltres too many free openings if you don't have a Blissey or Milotic or just don't have a plan for handling it because you know you can switch Salamence or Aerodactyl into Fire Blast or HP Grass one or once or two times, but it can also use Will O Wisp, so you know, careful. Alright, so I think those are the important matchups. Or I, I kind of briefed uh, I briefly went over the more important ones. Uh you know, that I didn't already go over when talked about its movesets. And remember, Salamence Metagross is a thing of beauty. So uh now let's go over the common sets luckily a lot of its sets luckily for me and being able to condense this a lot of its sets fit on similar teams so let's start with um physical offense just a straight up mash earthquake boom whatever uh with magneton so magneton killing skarm snorlax uh being like the special sponge version of metagross same thing so body slam earthquake shadow ball self-destruct uh, then you throw in your other stuff, your Salamence, your Swampert, your Heracross. This is a standard, very powerful team. However, it does have some notable weaknesses. Not just Moltres, uh, but also opposing mixed Salamence. So that's why Gyarados is another fine partner. You also have to be careful of Will-O-Wisp Gengar. So that's why some people like their Pursuit Tar. And if you're astute... This is also a very powerful team, but if you're astute, you also notice, hey, this can totally run Pursuit, and um, with a different set, obviously. I mean, th this is also a fine set, um, although most Pursuit uh, meta teams, I think, are, well, I, I guess I can't really definitively say if they're on offense, or on a magless offense or not, so I, I, I'll say it's even, but generally, you will see the full-on Pursuit with, you know, the max special attack and the psychic and that kind of thing, which could be here, too. 
Just uh, watch out for that defensive Jirachi. It is annoying. Uh, so keep that in mind. At least you don't need the HP fire. It's not like it's going to be doing much. You have Mag to help out with that. But that, that's that kind of thing. You can run Dragon Dance on this Tar. So you got the trio of Dragon Dancers. And the two um, big fat guys who are just going to take any hit and blow up and blow a hole in the opposing team. And that's how these teams work. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, you can throw in other stuff, but yeah, Gyarados helps with Moltres and Mag, but yeah, Lum Pursuit Tar is nice because it actually helps with, um, Moltres, whereas Metagross just kind of is like, well, th this issue gets worse and worse, because with Dragon Dance, you can't really switch into Will-O-Wisp, so, and you'll shrug it off on a one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, that's not really the point, so Pursuit Tar is generally favored if you can fit it, but, you know, uh, Doug Trio is... A problem. I mean, you got to be able to punish it with Salmons and Gyarados, but before you got to get out in front of the Doug. So you got to be doing your damage as soon as possible, um, and softening it, softening it up before you have no choice but to you know let whatever die to Doug and then send in this, and then have the horrifying sinking feeling. Oh man, well his counter is still uh, uh, their counter is still alive. Um, to to check this, and I didn't get it out of the way, so what gives and so yeah these these kinds of teams are very high maintenance in play but they're synergistic and powerful and you just got to be heads up so now what happens if you remove the magneton uh well it's pretty much the same thing i mean you get your swampert in here and you get your zapdos to help with the mix mints and moltres issue and you pretty much go like this except this now has more reason to be choice banned and uh, it can also run the mix set with um, HP Fire, Lum for Gengar, and it's pretty much the same, and you know, it's your call if this wants to be DD or Mix or, you know, Band if you're counting on blowing Skarm up with this and things of that nature. This, uh, can't run this set because it's blanked by Skarm. I mean, even if, generally Focus Punch is nice, but, I mean, if you're really intent on blowing that Skarm up, then, you know, Focus Punch, then you can go Earthquake, but it's kind of a risky move, so this can be DD or Pursuit or just straight up Mix, you know, the, this thing. Um, Zapdos likes to be timid for the Moltres and uh, Mixman's Fiasco, and you run your Thunder Wave, so you have your um, your outs against offensive DD stuff. And you know, Meta Salamence, thing of beauty. Oh, the, these three, the offensive synergy these guys have is just astounding. I mean, Snorlax even helps out against the um, the special stuff that they don't really want to take on together, like your Zapdos, Suicune, Starmie kind of thing. Oh, it's lovely. So, oh yeah, this kind of team is quite popular. Uh, you can throw in your various other stuff, your arrows and your hair crosses and whatever. But yeah, th those are the common offensive ones. Um, yeah, and th this could also even be agility. You just gotta really count. like uh, some Snorlax like to run curse and blow up Skarm themselves with uh, Lax. So you gotta you can run agility with your meta and get the purd or avoid the trap. Because these teams can be kind of trap prone, so yeah, that's that's uh, your call, your prerogative. But yeah, so now you can kind of see where those fit. And uh, agility gross can also totally fit on uh, mag offense teams, of course. Um, as can band, although it has less reason to be banned if it's not blowing through Skarm. So uh, yeah, I think that's a good example. And it can also fit on more defensive teams with Magneton. Uh, the first example would be like Magneton Spikes, so uh, this would be an example where defensive Metagross comes into play, so Impish, and this is its help against Tyranitar. Um, so if you've got Zapdos, Tyranitar, and then you want something else offensive as your last, um, so it, it can be a lot of things, but the point is kind of that um, how do I say this? You're kind of you're soft checking things rather than hard countering, which I think is a good habit to get into. Um, or this set also fits if like uh, on those spikeless offense teams, if your Swampert wants to be Salic Berry to you know get the jump on Mixmens and Moltres itself. So Ice Beam or Roar or you know even Swagger if you're crazy, but generally Ice Beam or Roar. Um, and 
Uh, my apologies. <laughs> my head's a little in the clouds now. But yeah, th this would be an example of where Impish meta would help out. I mean, na meta just naturally would help, but you would want bulk, and Impish kind of works here because you've got the spikes and you want the extra backup, so um, this kind of thing would work. And it, meta can also work on things like uh, Claydol Magneton teams, which often are lacking in punch. Um, so, you know, you want you want all the backup in the world for your Suicune, Snorlax, whatever. Um, and this can be, you know, your Dugtrio, your whatever. But Metagross is great, or uh, Defensive Zapdos, because it can reset the weather on Tar, like if you're running this set. But yeah, like these kinds of teams with, with Mag da down and Metagross free to come in without conceding Skarm spikes or even being affected by spikes and slowly worn down, then this is great because it gives you more punch against opposing Snorlax, which you might notice these five severely lack. I mean, Roar Suicune, bold Roar Suicune goes far, but not, not that far so as to be your only counter. Same with the Curse Lax Ward, something horrible. So yeah, th this is a... It doesn't need to be Impish necessarily because Bold Suicune and Claydol is pretty good, but this doesn't need to be Zapdos either. It can be Dugtrio. But uh, y you get the gist. Metagross is really nice here. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that that's mostly it. Um, offense, Magneton or otherwise, and then defensive on the bulkier teams, or even on offensive teams with Magneton that need a little bulk while still being able to dish out offense. And that's kind of what Metagross does to begin with. Um, you can do things like on certain offensive teams with like um, Heracross. Let, let, let's say, you know how Tarantar fits in on some special offense teams? Like uh, let's say this be, is like a Jirachi or something. An early game you have like Celebi and Heracross. Um, to bait in the opposing Doug Trio, and then kill it with your own while it's locked into HP Bug or Aerial Ace, and then you know Jirachi and Tarantar and every and the other one of these two really loves not having Doug Trio to deal with. This is a bad example, by the way, because look at what a simple Earthquake from Arrow with Spikes Down does to this team. But it's just the principle of the thing. Anyway, um, you usually won't see both Celebi and Heracross either. My God, you'll see like a Zapdos or a Gengar, because uh, they also have amazing synergy with. Um, with Dugtrio and help get the offense rolling. But yeah, uh, so this can be uh, Swampert for the superior rock resist if you don't want your only rock resist to be destroyed by um, Earthquake, which means that either uh, you can't switch into, you know, Arrow that's predicting right uh, on a good day, especially with spikes down, uh, and DD Tar can get messy. Uh, so. Especially if it can get two off, which it usually can, if it's bulky and comes in unscathed, which isn't a huge ask when, you know, Psychic is being thrown around from these two, and it can dance up with bulk. You can't, you know, switch Doug Trio and damage it at the same time, so it is going to be able to get that second hit off, you know, the power of bulky DD Tar. And you can totally run uh, Metagross here, and, I mean, it's not the same sweeping potential as Jirachi, and I mean, some people even like to run both with a strategy like this, I mean, because the Steel Psychic typing is just so nice. Um, but yeah, th this would be totally valid. I mean, Drachi kind of helps out with, on the special front, where Swamper just kind of crumples to a lot of HP grasses, so it's like an offensive way of dealing with Zapdos. And so, uh, here you would have, you would put the pressure on with meta, uh, so it could work here as well, but this is less common. But this would be a totally fine team. Anyway, so I think, uh, that should cover most of Metagross, um... You can really mix and match its sets, but you gotta be aware of its issues. Uh, Skarm being the main one, and trapping. So you really gotta, as usual with these good Pokemon, play heads up, know the metagame, know your opponent's team, figure it out, uh, know what you need to do to win, and Metagross will reward you. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, and I will, I hope it was informative and all that good stuff, and I will catch you next time.